Welcome to Balancing Redox by Half Reactions. In the last video, we looked at a simple method of balancing called balancing by oxidation number. And that particular method is useful for very simple cases. However, sometimes we have more complicated redox to deal with, or we have redox reactions that happen in acids and bases. For those situations, we need a more robust method, and that's balancing by half reactions. Now, before we actually look at how to balance in an acidic solution or when an acid is present, we're going to look at balancing by half reactions in the simplest case, just to get an idea for what it looks like. You can click the link at the bottom of this page to skip directly to balancing in an acidic solution. Otherwise, let's consider the copper and silver redox reaction. Here we have copper reacting with silver nitrate to form copper 2 nitrate and solid silver. The first thing I'm going to do is assign oxidation states to everything involved. Copper is a 0, silver is a plus 1. This nitrate group shows up on both sides, so we keep it together as a minus 1. The copper over here is a plus 2, and the silver is a 0. Now you could probably balance this reaction just by looking at it, but let's just write out the half reactions and see what the process generally looks like. So for the half reactions, I'm only going to consider what's being oxidized and reduced, and I'm going to ignore the nitrates because they show up unchanged on both sides. So these nitrates are spectator ions, we're going to ignore them completely. So I have copper becomes copper 2 plus, and it lost two electrons to have that change. And I have my silver starting as a plus 1, gaining an electron, becoming solid silver. I'm going to balance a number of electrons here. So I have two electrons here, and I need to get two electrons here. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 2. So multiplying the second one by 2 is going to get me 2 of this, 2 of this, and 2 of this. Now I'm going to add up everything on the left side and everything on the right side for both of these half reactions. I'm basically recombining the half reactions. That gives me copper on the left, that takes care of this, plus 2 silver plus 1s, that takes care of this term, plus 2 electrons, that takes care of this, that's everything on the left side, so now I'm going to go to the right side of the reaction. I have a single copper 2 plus ion, that takes care of this. I have two solid silvers, and I have my two electrons. Because I have two electrons on each side, I don't need them in the reaction, they're balanced, so I can get rid of these. And now I have my balanced reaction. And we know it's balanced because we've seen this reaction before but this is balanced for mass and for charge. But the general idea here was that I first assigned oxidation numbers to everything to figure out what was being oxidized and what was being reduced. I ignored the spectator ions that show up the same on both sides, and then I wrote half reactions. Once I had the half reactions, I made sure they were balanced for mass and charge. I added coefficients to make sure that the electrons were the same in each half reaction. Once the electrons were the same in each half reaction, I then combined them together to make the complete balanced equation. So as I said, this is a fairly simple example. Let's now look at an example that takes advantage of balancing by half reactions and what is actually necessary. Here we have a very complicated looking equation. And also, it has a strong acid in it. We should be able to recognize HCl as a strong acid. So I need to balance this somehow. The first thing I want to do is identify oxidation and reduction. But I'm actually going to write out the ions that come out of this, because some of these are salts. I know the strong acid dissociates. KCl should completely dissociate. So if I can write out the ions instead of some of these compounds, I'm going to have an easier time of recognizing oxidation and reduction. So K2CrO4 is really potassium ions and CrO4 2 minus. I'm just making a list here. I also have H plus from the acid and Cl minus. On the other side, again, I have K plus from the KCl, Cl minus from the same compound. This chromate right here has to be a plus 3 to balance out the negative 1 chlorines. And again, I have chlorine showing up. I also have a water molecule, and I have elemental chlorine, diatomic chlorine. So the first thing I want to do is ignore anything that shows up the same on both sides because obviously it's not being oxidized or reduced so right away I can eliminate K plus we'll also ignore any hydrogen ions hydroxide ions or water molecules so hydrogen 
water, and there are no hydroxides, these are all going to be ignored. Everything left over is going to be represented in my half reactions. The CrO4 is going to be related to this chromium plus 3 ion, and the Cl- on the left side, even though it's not oxidized to form these Cl-, it is oxidized to get this diatomic chlorine. So I've been able to eliminate everything except four species, and those are going to make my half reactions from. So my first half reaction will be CrO4 2 minus becoming Cr plus 3. My second half reaction is going to be Cl minus becoming chlorine gas. Now that I've written my half reactions, the next step is going to be balancing for atoms. I want to make sure I have the same number of atoms present in the half reactions on each side of the half reaction. So the first place we need to fix that is with the chlorines. I have diatomic chlorine on one side and only one chlorine on the other. So this automatically needs to be a 2 Cl minus. And there are no oxygens present, so this one is done. The next part about balancing for atoms has to do with oxygens. If oxygens show up, I have to balance them by adding in waters. So I have four oxygen here. That means I need to add four oxygen in the form of water to the other side. But you may realize that even though I've fixed the oxygens, I now have the same number of oxygens on each side, I've now introduced hydrogen. So I'm going to balance any added waters with hydrogens. So I added eight total hydrogens in this water. That means I need to add eight hydrogens on the other side. In this step, we balanced the atoms, we balanced the masses. For each half reaction, we now have the same number of atoms on each side of the half reaction. However, these are not finished yet. Neither half reaction has been balanced for charge. And I can see that if I add up all the charges on each side. I have eight plus ones here and a minus two. So this side has a total of plus six. The other side has just this plus three, so it's a total of plus three on this side. The charges are not balanced in this half reaction. Now if I look at the second half reaction, I'll see the same thing. The left side has two negative charges, so that's a minus two total on this side. And the other side is neutral, so this is a zero. So how am I going to balance charges? Well, I'm going to add in electrons to balance them out. I need to get both numbers to be the same. So for this half reaction, I have three on this side and six on this side. Adding electrons always makes things more negative. So if I add three electrons to this side, that will subtract three from the plus six, and now these are both the same. For the second half reaction, I need to make this zero get down to minus two, so I add in two electrons on this side. That's two negatives to this side, so zero minus two is negative two. By adding electrons to each half reaction, I've now made sure that each half reaction is balanced for mass and for charge. Now that the reactions are balanced for mass and for charge, this is now going to look similar to what we just did. This first half reaction has three electrons in it. This second half reaction has two electrons in it. And I need them to have the same number of electrons being gained and lost. So the first half reaction, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by two. The second one, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by three. I'm now going to rewrite these to make it look a little bit cleaner. I've now multiplied each half reaction by what we said we were going to multiply them by, and I've stacked them on top of each other, lining them up so that I can very easily add them into one big equation. And I can make my life a little bit easier because I know I have six electrons on the product side and on the reactant side, so I can eliminate that entirely. And then when I add these reactions together, I'm going to get 16 hydrogen ions plus 6 chlorine ions plus 2 chromate yields 2 chromium plus 3 plus 3 chlorine gas plus 8 waters. We now have a balanced reaction that shows the oxidation and reduction that takes place in this. We can now take this and use it to balance the original reaction. So we're going to clean this up a little bit so we're not looking at too much. And let's see how this reaction lets us fill in coefficients for the original reaction we had to balance. I have 16 hydrogen ions on the left side. Those had to have come from the HCl, so that has a coefficient of 16. I have two chromates that had to come from this compound. On the product side, I have two chromium ions that had to come from this, so that's a two. 
I have three chlorine gas, that clearly goes here. And I have eight waters, which fills in this. The only thing I'm missing is the KCl. And that's because both ions involved in this were spectator ions, so they weren't part of our half reactions. But at this point, we have coefficients for everything else. So it's going to be very easy for us to fill in what this KCl is. And in fact, we have the K2 on the other side right here, times 2, is 4 potassiums. That means I also need 4 potassiums here. We've now completely balanced this reaction in terms of charge and mass, and we did it by using half reactions. This is a fairly long method, but if you keep track of the steps, it's pretty straightforward. The next video balances a slightly more difficult reaction to show this same process. That wraps up our lesson on balancing redox by half reactions given an acidic solution. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.